So I have to confess that this video is actually, uh, most of the footage is from a couple of years ago because um, I made an attempt to clone some autumn olive root cuttings at that point and I planted them out in the hoop house and then it got really dry and uh, the cuttings didn't make it. They sort of sprouted and then they dried out and died and so I didn't want to reshoot all that footage of collecting the roots so the early part of the video is older footage and then uh, the actual planting of the root cuttings in the ground and then the process after that is all new. So I just wanted to give that little explanation but now let's start the video. As you can see from my amaryllis uh, it is spring. Well it's not quite spring, it's late winter, but it's a great time to go out on the land and collect some root cuttings of autumn olive. Um, continuing my series on unusual fruits, I'm trying to increase my plantings of unusual fruits. And uh, so we're gonna go out and get some clones of autumn olive. Now, some of you may know autumn olive as an invasive species, and it is on our land as well. It's definitely something we're concerned about, but right now it's just getting established and it has useful properties you know it's a it's a great fruit it's super hardy and disease resistant and uh and it also fixes nitrogen now you may not be familiar with all the things that you can do with autumn olive fruit but one of the things that i like to do is to make juice the juice has to be sweetened um, and diluted to some extent to cut the astringency but the flavor is delicious and you know great local juice is amazing if you uh, sort of process and strain out the pulp, you can make a fruit leather out of that by drying it out, spreading it out on a, on a sheet in a dehydrator and uh, drying it that way. And it's, it's just delicious. Um, and then I'm sure if you made this kind of concentrate and canned it, you could use that in smoothies. I haven't done that because I just like to drink the juice straight. So I think I'm going to get Banjo here ready for a walk out on the land and I'll get all my stuff together and we can get going. I've been reading about how to propagate autumn olive and there's a certain specific bush out there that has big juicy uh, fruit. And so I wanna get a clo some clones of that specific bush. So we're gonna go out there and do that. We're gonna dig some up and I'm taking Banjo for a walk. She's, uh, well, she's gone already way down the path. But we're gonna start start walking over out there it's about you know halfway out on our land our land is pretty big space 280 acres <laughs> I've made it out here onto our land, pretty far out on the land, and I'm right next to a few autumn olive bushes here. And this one in particular, every year it's just loaded with fruit. It's bright red, juicy, big, and there's a lot of autumn olives in this area and on our land, and I don't know of any that produces as good a fruit as this one does. And that's why I'm choosing this one to take some root cuttings from, which is what I'm going to be doing today. That is what I've read in the uh, Uncommon Fruits for Every Garden book is the way to propagate autumn olive. And so I want to make clones, I want to make a bunch of baby bushes of this exact same genetic heritage. And now it's just going to be a matter of finding some roots under here that are specifically this bushes roots could be a challenge i wouldn't doubt that i'll oops and there we go we found a root right there um, i doubt that i'd be able to find a root here but it's a matter of knowing for sure that it's going to be belong to this one bush here Ooh. well kind of cut it up a little bit we can give it a shot. Oh yeah, you can see actually on this root, 
I can see the little bacterial uh, nodes. They talk about Eliagnus being a nitrogen fixer, just like uh, just like legumes are. But uh, never really looked closely enough at their roots to see. Even nodes. Nice little collection of roots, and I'm gonna go take them back and cut them up into smaller pieces, likely, and pot them up. Andrew's hot on the trail of a bunny. I think she actually found a little bunny nest in there. Okay, so let's see what we ended up with from our expedition to gather roots. Now I would guess that it's better to have a section with some roots hanging down from it already, some longer roots, uh, than to have one of these middle sections. But I think it, I don't think it matters that much. Um, and I was read in the book for taking root cuttings that if they're about the width of a pencil, uh, it should be about four inches long. Well, at least four inches long. So you just want to make sure. This is a little bit wider than the width of a pencil. Um, but I'm just going to cut these up into maybe like four or five inch seg segments because it doesn't, I'm not short on root uh, roots here. The roots are pretty amazing because uh, they're just, completely different than other parts of the plant because they're made to be in soil. So if you put them, these back in soil, um, they have the potential to grow into new plants, at least with this, um, apparently with this plant, this kind of plant. Not all plants you can take root cuttings of and they'll, and they'll sprout new plants, but supposedly this one you can. Okay, so we've got our five or six inch segments of roots here, and we'll just put them back in the plastic bag. This time, instead of planting the cuttings in the hoop house, I'm planting them outside where water is more reliable. <laughs> Actually, it hasn't rained for two months, so I'm going to have to keep watering them. So our root cuttings have been in the fridge for a little bit and now we're ready to plant them out in the garden and I've worked up this section of the bed uh, right next to my yellow horn and Siberian beach peas so my little perennial plant starting section and we're just gonna bury these in the ground obviously try to get any extra roots that are hanging off of them buried as well and I would say just bury them a couple of inches deep. And at this point you don't have to be too worried about planting them close together because we're going to eventually dig them up and replant them somewhere else. But this is just our little nursery bed to get them going. We've got our root cuttings in and we'll just wait and see what happens to them. All right, so it's maybe a month after I planted these, maybe a little more, a month and a half. And uh, there are some signs of life happening. We've got some little shoots coming up. Seems like there's a lot of shoots that come up at once. Um, off of some of these roots and I don't really see any other ones yet. Looks like if we can keep these things going and they continue to um, 
strengthen these chutes, then uh, we'll probably have been successful with our uh, with our autumn olive cuttings, root cuttings, and uh, I'll come back and show you them when they're a little bit bigger than this. For now, it looks like we've got some success. Okay, so one last little update on the autumn olives. You can see that little bush is getting going, and there's another one over here. And you know, these things seem to be really susceptible to disease at this time. And I don't know, I mean, they're sprouting, but there was one right here that started going, and that has since then just shriveled up and died. And then there's a couple other shoots over here coming up. It looks like they're struggling too. I don't know, maybe just the amount of moisture that they get, but these ones at least look like they might be healthy enough to, to get going and we'll have to keep on giving updates throughout the season how they're doing. All right, so it looks like we had a little bit of success with the autumn olive root cuttings, and I've got some new bushes going that are clones of that one uh, really super great tree that we have out on our land. And so I'll continue to give you updates throughout my videos this season, and we'll see how those things grow. And I think probably at the end of the season or maybe early next spring, I will transplant those out to some other spot um, where I can let the, <laughs> let the bushes grow big and uh, start producing fruit. All right, well, don't forget to subscribe to Hardcore Sustainable and share and like the video, and we'll see you next time.